Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode of my series of Behind the Raw, where I take you with me into Lightroom Classic and I talk you through my thoughts on an image, my workflow, my editing style, and any mistakes that I've made so that you don't have to. Now, this week, it's the turn of a visit that I did, which was a phenomenal trip. So I always encourage many people, plus myself, to go explore more and to find new locations. Yes, granted, there are some stunning locations to find, and there's many of them throughout Ireland, but it's always really rewarding when you find some place that you can call your own. Now, on this day, I headed to a location that I hadn't been to since I was a teenager. So I used to go to uh, close to a place called Ballyhaig, and then when I was, I don't know, 15 to 17 with my best friend. And this day I decided that I'd go down and see what it was like since I have now got photographer eyes. And as I was there, the light was quite harsh, so I went exploring. And I drove and I drove and I looked and I found a spot on a Google Maps pin and I said, okay, I'm going to check it out. If you haven't seen that video, I'd love for you to go watch it. I'll link for it up here. It was a phenomenal adventure. Now, on that day, and this is the one thing about seascape photography, you end up taking quite a lot of images because every wave is going to be different. Now, I took around 750 images and I'm going to pick just one image here I'm going to jump over onto Lightroom and I'm going to talk you through exactly how I process that image. Let's go. Right, so here is the image here in Lightroom and it's one of, like I said, over 750 frames that I took. But what I like about this image is that there's quite a lot going on in the one frame. Now, here is in the RAW file and straight away you can see up here you've got a big blown highlight and that is the sun. So it's the brightest thing in the universe. It is going to be blown and even when you say, okay, I want to bring all that down, if I bring my exposure all the way down here, you can see I've blown those highlights because it's the brightest thing in the universe. So that aside, we'll still be able to uh, contain the image anyway as we go through the edit. Now, a couple of things I suppose on this and I'll start off just to give you a look at uh, some of the areas within the image that I do like. So if I hit this onto auto so you can see a bit more of the image here. Now, if I zoom in and I give you a look uh, at these cliffs. So these cliffs were absolutely incredible and it was an area that I found I'd never been to before. I've never seen images of before. But look at the detail, the textures and also the shapes on this here with all all of the algae coming down, beautiful contrast on the colors. And what was happening is that these waves were coming in here and were curling around this rock and then breaking up over the top. Now I can imagine what this is gonna be like on a winter's trip. I'm definitely gonna go back there for it because I think it would be insane with waves coming up here and crashing up against the upper part of the cliffs. Now below as well here, this was great because I was able to have quite a lot of movement on the water as it cascades over these rocks. And then this was, I think, the second composition that I had found because I could see back into this cove that you see here. And I love the texture of the water as it comes back in and around these dark rocks. And then below me here was one rock where these waves would come in from this side and then would curve over the top of the rock. And you see you capture the movement as well in the water there. Now, moreover, and I think what I really liked about this was the fact that I could have these rocks here, which were nicely framing the entire scene. Now, of course, on the right hand side here, I had blank, but what I'd wanted to do was to wait for the sun to come out, which is what I did here to light up the scene from that side. So I'm going to reset the image now and I'll talk you through my editing process of the image overall. So first step that I will do generally is I will go into my crop and I will make sure that my horizon is straight. Now this is probably off more than I would have liked, but okay, it's 0.69 off. The other thing I'm going to do while I'm at this now is I'm going to change this out and I'm going to go into my 16.9. And by doing that and bringing this here to the horizon, number one, I can make sure my horizon is straight, but number two, I lose part of the sky that's here which is what I want to do effectively because I don't really think that the sky there is adding much to it because it was dark grey. Now also I want to maximize the space that I can get here because I don't want to lose this area down here on the um, 
the rocks below so I want to maximize out all of the space that I can get from that which I think I have done right now yes so now that's one challenge as well and when I'm doing my one-to-ones with people and also the group workshops I tell people always straighten your horizon when you're out in the field and this is a perfect example because if I look and I'll zoom in to give you a look down here so let me go back out of this for a moment and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to look down here. So you see, I mentioned a moment ago that I really liked the water, the way it was cascading over the top of this. Now, this is now gone because of the change that I've had to make. So I'm missing out on a small, tiny bit of real estate there on the bottom left of the image. It's not much, but it's always something that to be conscious of, get your horizon as straight as you can when you're out in the field. So that's the first thing. Second thing, now I'm going to look at this image and I'm going to approach it in my general way that I would approach an image. So I'm going to fit it onto the screen. And now my histogram is going to tell me what I can and can't do. Ideally, what I want to try and do is to increase more detail here in the center of the image. So you can see it's quite dark on the left hand side over here. It's quite bright on the right hand side. So you can see the darkness is appearing here on the left hand side of the histogram. And then the brightest, which is obviously this area here, is blown because it's the brightest thing in the universe like I mentioned so I'm going to look and say okay do I need to change my highlights so if I bring my highlights down as an example you see that I lose that blown out area here it's no longer blown it's just a bright part in the image so I think okay I can do that if I bring up my shadows now I can whack those all the way up and you see all this detail coming out here in these cliffs and whilst I do think that's good because you can get all that detail back from a raw I generally would never bring it all the way up. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping some bit of detail and I can always change that with the blacks as well, but I want to keep it some bit dark, not totally bright. On the whites, you can see it's going to affect this up here and it's also going to affect the waves. So right now I think my whites are good, but I want to see if I can get a bit more out of the whites <clears throat> just to make the waves themselves brighter. I can tackle the sky as a separate entity if I need be in a moment. So already if you look at the histogram here, I'm getting a lot more detail in the center so I'm getting a lot more uh, balance within the overall exposure of the image and then finally here on the blacks so again if I bring my blacks down and I crunch my blacks you'll see them kind of turning blue here because I have this button up here turned on what I want to do on this occasion is I want to increase them slightly so I want to bring up the blacks and if you look at the histogram here it's going to move it away from the left hand side and bring more of the detail into the center of the image now on the next set of sliders here on texture so if I increase texture ever so slightly and the reason I do that is because you've got a lot of texture on the rocks that are here and also on the cliff face. I generally wouldn't use it, but it's still a good thing to add a touch of it. So plus 16. I don't need clarity, but dehaze, I think I will give it a go. And I probably will go a small bit here. If you look at what's going to happen, it's just going to change the sky and change the clouds as well. So if we turn that off, see it's brighter. Now all it's doing is just creating a bit more mood into the image and I really liked the texture in the sky as well and I'm going to tackle that as well in a moment. Now from a vibrance point of view I do want to add a touch of vibrance because this water was absolutely beautiful. It was a turquoise greeny blue color um, and if I want to bring out that more I'm going to increase my vibrance here and I'm going to bring it up probably around about maybe yeah, 36 I think is the important one here for me. I don't want to go too much on that. Now again Keeping an eye on this up here, because this is telling me now that this is whiter than white. So now I can do here is I can attack my highlights again and I can bring that and just pair that slightly down so we can keep a bit of the color in the sky overall. Now, I could be done with that image right now. Um, if I give you a look and press F for full screen, that will give us a look at the overall image. And I really like the image here. What I do like, if I go back all this for a moment and I zoom in to give you a look at, I love the texture that you have in the water here. I love the texture that you have as the water is moving around. Not so much a fan of the yellow foam that you have because that's obviously been stirred up by the waves as they're coming through. But look at the detail here on the water as it's cascading in and out of these rocks. That in itself, I think, would make a lovely image. And I actually thought about trying to get down here to the cove, but it wasn't possible. Um, I know there probably would be a way, but probably not for me. Maybe Bernard Garrity would be able to do that, but not for me. Uh, and then here, looking at the water, as you can see, as it, as it cascades off the side of this rock. But where my most interest was in here, because these waves were coming in and they were curling over. Now, I shot this at a third of a second. I was at F10, ISO 100, and I was as wide as I go at 16 mil. But all along this coastline here, there was some big waves crashing and they were filling up this almost entire area with the 
spray from that. And then this one up here where you have the sun and the sunlight now as well, lighting up the whole scene overall. So from that point of view, all I want to do right now is see, can I do anything specific, specifically with this sky? So if I go into masks and I'm going to select my sky, and that's going to AI detect the sky. And now if I go to that and I click on it and say, okay, I want that to intersect again with the sky, it will remove any haloing that you have around the edges of the cliffs here. Now this will allow me to be able to treat the sky and only the sky. So if I take my exposure, for example, and bring it all the way down here, you can see it's only affecting the sky. But one thing I suppose is I want to make sure that I'm being quite delicate on that because I don't want to change the exposure. All I want to do is to try and influence the uh, uh, highlights so if I go to here and just bring my highlights slightly down now I can start to see a bit more of that color from the Sun that was coming through and plus I'm getting more detail as well in the clouds if I take my shadows and I bring those down as well I can start to see a bit more detail as well in those clouds and now we have an overall better image now if I come back out of this and go back into my standards and now I go into my F8 to give a look at the overall view of the image. I think it will work out quite well because what the overall image does for me is it reminds me exactly of when I was there and it was a phenomenal location to have as a playground. I was hopeful by the way that the sun was going to drop and come into this gap here and light up all the cliffs. I asked for a lick of light. I did get a lick of light. You'd have to watch the episode to see exactly what happened but I think from this was fantastic to be able to reward me for being able to you know find this location. Uh, I almost killed my van trying to find this location so I think it was worth it. Final thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go backslash and show the before and the after. So as you can see here what I've done is I brought out the detail in the cliffs and I brought a bit more detail and texture into the waves and I've also controlled that sky a bit more as well. So what I was aiming to try and do as well with this is I put on, um, I changed F16 because I wanted to try and get a sun star. And whilst you know you can get a sun star from that, it was just going through a lot of haze, so it wasn't enabling me to get the sun star. But nonetheless, I still liked this overall image. So the final thing then that I'll do is go into detail and I'll click on denoise. And what this effectively will do will assess the entire image and apply denoise where it believes that denoise is necessary. So the area it's showing right here, which I think is around about this area, doesn't necessarily have much noise because it's the bright area. But where I'm interested in seeing noise is going to be over here on the um, way. Wave. So this is the wave that you see crashing here. So now if we look at the before and after, so there are noise art the artifacts within that, now they're gone. And if we look at the cliffs, which is the darker than dark area, so again this is before and then this is after. Much, much cleaner. And I think it's a better uh, overall way to be able to address that image. So thank you very much as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed my view behind the scenes in relation to how I'd edit this image. Be sure to join me uh, next week, next Sunday, because I have a different type of episode coming out. So I've made a sequence of videos that I want to kind of share thoughts and learnings on. And one which is really, really important is the weather and how to understand the weather, how to use the weather for your advantage. And I've always said the bad conditions don't exist in landscape photography. There is always a shot and I want to go through my thought process in relation to that. So thank you very much as always for joining. If it's your first time on the channel, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment because it really does help spread the video far and wide. And if you enjoy what you saw, be sure to hit subscribe the subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you next time. Stronger folk.